So with what we've done so far, we've been able to solve most equations, but we haven't been able to do things like in general, just whatever. It's been very specific cases, like where we have just one variable off to one side, or when we subtract variables, it's usually not all that bad. Right now, we're going to combine everything into these equations. So we're talking about general equations. Specifically, what I mean are equations of the form ax plus b equals cx plus d. And that might look kind of fancy because I have a whole bunch of letters going on up there. Here's what I mean by this. All I mean by solving equations of this form is you have two or the same variable but on both sides of your equation. So I have variables here and have variables here, and we want to learn how to deal with those things. I, I think you might have had a couple of those on your homework, as a matter of fact, but I want to give you some general steps on how to solve these. Are you ready for it? So here's what we do. Here's an example, like a, a real example, without all these letters up there, of things that we can work with in this section. So let's say we have something like 5z minus 4 equals 8z plus 5. I'm going to give you some steps right now that are going to be the steps that are going to stick with you all the way through whatever math class you take. These are going to be the same steps for solving equations. Everything will come down to these three steps. That's kind of nice, right? It's pretty important. So if we have these three steps down, we're good to go. Here's your three steps on how to solve equations whenever you get them. First step. The first step is you have to simplify, which means distribute, and combine like terms on both sides of your equation first. So number one thing you look for is to simplify and combine like terms on both sides of the equation. Excuse me. Thank you. Hey, let's try that. Look it up, up at our equation. Do we have anything to simplify? Do we have anything to distribute is what I'm asking. Do we have anything to distribute here? Yeah. Yeah. Distribute means there would be some parentheses. Do I have anything to distribute? No. no. Okay. Do I have any like terms? Yes. Before you answer that, no. remember that like terms are on the same side of an equation. Do I have any like terms? No. 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 Step one's done. I don't have anything to distribute. I have no like terms to combine. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what you're looking for. You want something like this, where you've got variable plus or minus number equals variable plus or minus number. Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. That's the idea. So step one will get you down to this spot get you down to right here. So on step one, we don't have any distribution. We have no like terms to combine. So step one's done. We're good to go. Step two, here we're, here's where the work comes in for us. What you're going to do is eliminate the smaller variable. And it will always be by addition subtraction. Eliminate the smaller variable, it will always be by addition subtraction. So we've already looked to distribute, we've already looked to combine like terms. We couldn't do any of that stuff because we didn't even have like terms. But now we can look for the smaller variable. What is a smaller variable here? 5z. 5z is a smaller one. We have 8z, we have five we have five z. So the smaller variable is what we get rid of first. We don't want to mess with the constants right now. Don't mess with the numbers. You see, if we start moving these numbers around first, what happens is sometimes we do it the wrong way, and then we have to get rid of a variable, and then we either get stuck, because we have zero on one side, and you're like, I don't know what to do with that, or you have to move the number back anyway. 
So firstly, find out where your variable is going to be sticking. Find out where, what side it's supposed to be on, and then work from there. Does that make sense to you? So firstly, get rid of your smaller variable. In our case, our smaller, smaller variable is 5z. How do we get rid of the 5z in this case? Yeah, it's always going to be either add or subtract when you're moving a variable. So for us, we're, we are certainly going to subtract 5z. We do that here. We do that here. Whatever you do to one side, you do exactly the same thing to the other side. That has to be that way. And we notice that by doing that on both sides, we actually create some like terms. Now these things, look at the board, these things are like terms. Now these things are like terms. They're now on the same side. That's how we move variables around. Can you please tell me what we are going to have remaining on the left-hand side of our equation? Good, it goes with the sign, so negative 4 is correct. Equals, on the right-hand side, we're going to have what? 3D plus 5. Perfect. Perfect. As soon as we get rid of our smaller variable, you are going to have something like this. The, the equations are going to look the same every single time you do this. You're going to distribute, combine like terms, you will get something that looks like that. You're going to get rid of the smaller variable, you're going to get something that looks like this. Where now you only have one variable, but it might be surrounded by some numbers. Now is the part where we get rid of those numbers. That's what we ended with, what your homework was on last time. Which number do we get rid of? Now, I'm not talking about the negative 4. There's no variable over there. That's fine. What I'm talking about are these two numbers. Which one do we get rid of first? Five. The 5 or the 3 first? Five. Five. The constant term first. And yes, we're going to subtract it. So after you eliminate the smaller variable by addition subtraction, the next step you're going to do is eliminate the constant term by addition subtraction. The constant term, again, is the number being added or subtracted after your variable or before your variable. It's never the number attached to your variable. And Jeff, what did you say we do? Subtract the 5. Okay. If we do that from one side, we also have to do that from the other side. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, tell me what we're going to have on the left-hand side of my equation. Nine. How much? Eight, Good. How about the right-hand side of my equation? Good, because those fives, those create a zero for us. We don't have to write that down. We're almost done. We don't want to leave it three z. We want z. So tell me what's the last thing you're going to do. Divide by three. Yeah, the last thing, the last step is always to divide. If there's a number in front of your variable, the way you get rid of that is just to divide. So the very last step for us, step number four, you're going to eliminate the coefficient. Remember that word coefficient? Yeah. I've had you say that in here before, right? Coefficient. Yeah. That's right. Good job. Uh, the coefficient is a number in front of the variable that we divide out. It's being multiplied by your z. So to eliminate that, we divide. So eliminate your coefficient by usually division, sometimes rarely multiplication if it's a fraction or if it's over a number. Limit the coefficient by multiplication and division. So in this case, yeah, we're going to divide. We've had these problems before in this class. So we're dividing by 3 on both sides. On the right-hand side, our 3s create that 1 for us. That's how they eliminate each other. And we get simply a z. On the left-hand side, we get what, everybody? Negative three. 3. Perfect. That's exactly right. That's the way we solve general equations. We simplify. We get rid of the smaller variable, then the constant. And then lastly, the only time we divide is when we're removing that coefficient. Let's do one more together. I'll give you a couple to do on your own, and then we'll start building these problems up little by little, okay? I'm going to ask you the same few questions every time we do a problem today. First thing, do I have anything that I can simplify first? No. 
No, there's no parentheses, there's no... Are there any like terms? No. Why not? They're not on the same side. Very good. Excellent. You're starting to see that. That's excellent. So my very first step should be to remove or get rid of or eliminate the smaller variable. Do you guys see the two variables? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, before you answer, I want you to think about this. Don't just shout out an answer. I'm going to ask you, what's the smaller variable? But before you say it, I want you to notice that variables also contain the sign in front of them. It's a term, right? So it contains a sign. So when we look at these variables, yes, I see the R. But over here, that's not just 3R. It goes to the sign in front of it. It's negative 3R. We're going to consider that to be negative 3R because we could write it as plus negative 3R. You with me on that? So which one's smaller, R or negative 3R? Negative 3R. Definitely negative 3R because that's negative. It goes with that sign. So we consider it positive negative. That negative is definitely smaller than 1R. Negative 3R is smaller than positive 1R. Are you with me on that? Yeah. Now, can you, will it come out the same if you subtract R from both sides? The answer is yes. Yeah, it will eventually come out the same. However, I'm going to try to make it easy on you guys. And the reason why I give this step is because if you always eliminate the smaller <coughs> variable, you will never have to divide by a negative. That's nice, right? You never divide by a negative. You, you get rid of that negative. So when we look at this thing, we say, which one's smaller? It's another r. It's a negative 3r. How are we going to get rid of that minus 3r? What are we going to do to it? Add 3. Plus 1. Add Add it. We're going to add it. Jeff, you had a question? Yeah, I was just wondering. Oh, okay, never mind. I got it. Easiest about. question of the day, Jeff. Love it. <laughs> so when we take a look at our problem where we're identifying the smaller variable, you always eliminate your smaller variable by addition subtraction. So when we look up here, we go, okay, how are we going to get rid of minus 3r? We're just going to do the opposite of that, plus 3r. But we have to do it to both sides. All right, tell me what we're going to get on the left-hand side of my equation here. 4 r. Good, yeah, that counts as 1 r. Perfect. Minus seven. Equals? Five. Five. Beautiful. Now we're down to something that we can really work with. What number are we going to get rid of next, please? Seven. Seven. Notice how we're not dividing till the very last step. It's just addition. It's combined like terms, which this is already done for you. Add, subtract, add, subtract, divide. It's so always going to be add, subtract, add, subtract, divide. Divide comes last. So we're going to add 7 to both sides. 4R equals, well, that's going to be 12 fours. And our last step is to get rid of the coefficient by division. So we're going to divide both sides by 4. And that's it. Hey, can you still check your work, by the way? Yeah. Sure. If we plug that in, we'd have 3 minus 7, that's negative 4. We'd have 5 minus 9, that's negative 4, that comes out the same. Yeah, I subtracted the 1R. Yep. I still got the same answer. Right, that's exactly what I was saying just a little while ago. Um, I, I was just telling you, like maybe 30 seconds ago, that will it work out the same if you subtract the R instead of add the 3R? And my answer was yes, it will work out the same. It has to, it's an equation. Once you do to one side, you do to the other side, it will work out. The problem is, if when you do that, you're dividing by a negative, and sometimes that messes up a lot of people. So what I'm doing here is I'm making this easier for you. I'm saying get rid of the smaller variable, that way you don't have to divide by negative. Are you clear on that? So will it work out the same if you subtract R here? Yes. Will it work out maybe a little bit easier for you by not dividing by a negative if you get rid of the smaller one? Yes. Probably a little bit easier. That's why I have you do that. Are you ready to try a couple on your own? Yeah. Sure. I'm going to put one over here. When you finish that one, I'll have that.